there's uh, about 200,000 bats who typically spend the winter in this mine. And I'm afraid a very large percentage of them are going to die in this. Across the northeastern United States this winter, researchers estimate that hundreds of thousands of bats died, and nobody knows why. When the first image of this white nose came to me, I immediately started sending it around because I hadn't seen anything like it, and I was pretty sure nobody else had it. The white stuff is a fungus. It's one of the few visible symptoms of what's being called white nose syndrome. It's proven to be true that of all the researchers in North America, um, none of them have ever seen anything like this. And Al Hicks is a scientist for the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation. We're about an hour north of Albany, New York, near Lake George, and the purpose of this trip is to collect as much data as possible before the bats leave the mine or die. So we had three bats in 11 minutes. This is another symptom. The bats are leaving the caves too early. These guys all feed on flying insects. And if they're coming out on snow, the number of insects that are available to them are pretty slim. But for them, it's probably a last-ditch effort anyway. Researchers say the bats may be leaving because they've used up all their hibernation fat. They're waking up and realizing that they're going to starve. Their choice is either they're going to die hanging on the, the wall of the mine or the cave, or they're going to fly out and make one last attempt to get food. Poor little guy. So this guy came out, and... Um, He's dying. I mean, we just pulled him out of the snow over there. He, there's no way this bat is going to survive. And he's not alone. This is a little brown bat, but other species, including the endangered Indiana bat, are also affected. And whatever's killing them, it's spreading fast. Last year, sick bats were found in only a few caves. This year, almost every cave checked within an 80-mile radius of those original sick caves now has sick bats. Plus, once white nose syndrome gets in a cave, it only takes two years for it to wipe out 80 or 90 percent of the population that hibernates there. Okay, the only rule in here is don't hit your head in the ceiling. The thing is, if you hit your head in the wrong spot here, a truck the rock the size of a car will come down. In a typical winter, none of these bats would be here. They're all, they'd all be farther down the street. And if we were to go to the other entrances, down to the cold ones, where it's closer to the kind of desperation temperatures they're looking for, I haven't even been down there. I'm sure there's dead bats all over the place there. One idea is that the bats are moving to colder areas to slow down their metabolism so they burn through less fat. Like leaving early for food, it may just be another way to stave off starving to death. The question is, what's causing the fungus and the starvation? It could be bacteria, virus, toxins. The researchers actually don't think the fungus is killing the bats because it's not in any vital tissues and not all the sick bats seem to have it. That would make it just a symptom. But then again, they don't know much about the fungus because no one's been able to grow it in the lab, which is why Melissa Baer is taking a different approach. I thought if we looked at it directly, maybe we would get an idea at least what species it belongs. Awesome. I'm gonna uh, grab them with these forceps. You're a little rough. You try to grab hairs or a little bit of the surface cells of the skin along with the fungus in your, then you get a better sample that way. Bear will also bring dead bats back to the lab to look for viruses. In fact, infected bats are being shipped around the country for examination. Researchers at the National Wildlife Health Center in Madison, Wisconsin, and Cornell's College of Veterinary Medicine in Ithaca, New York, for example, are all looking for clues for what's happening to these bats. But so far, very few leads. I'm Flora Lichtman for Science Friday.